Hello, my Bill 5000 Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. All right, we are back with another Coffeehouse Crime. This one here is Coffeehouse Crime Case Update, Spring 2023. Oh, and before we get into this story, yes. And I'm going to go ahead and say, it. this, this was not my old lady attacking me in any way, shape, or form. This was my watch. There was a piece of something sharp right there. And I... Stupid shit happens, alright? That's all I can say, man. I don't know. It's life. Go ahead. Turn them lights down low. Put on something comfy. Couple, something special. Let's get informative. We're about to get some information. Coffee House Crime is no stranger to reporting on modern day true crime cases all across the globe. Strange, disturbing, and outright devastating stories that leave permanent holes in the societies around them. Now, unfortunately, once a story is spoken about here, it doesn't make much sense to make a second video on it. But that doesn't mean that each case has its own small updates which bring the story some closure. And so, every once in a while, I promise to bring you seasonal case updates where we sit down, review what stories have developed in the recent months, and of course, drink coffee. Seriously, I will not stop drinking coffee until this video is done here, so yeah, there I'm going to be well and adequately caffeinated. Good morning, folks. Good afternoon or good evening. I'm your host, Adrian, if you didn't know that by now, and welcome back to another video by Coffee House Crime. This one is a special one, and it's one heavily requested by you folks. Now, one of the most frequent requests I get through emails and comments is regular case updates where they are due. And of course, that's exactly what I'm going to give you. By the way, is it just me that feels like a giant when drinking through these small cups? It's small than my hand. Nah, bro, I love the little cups. It's like, oh, it's a little... It's amazing. I have so much fun with things like that. I do. Man, how are you supposed to get caffeinated on these things? If you're new here, I like to post true crime and strange cases on a weekly basis, so if that does sound like a kind of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel, it really does help me out. So I think it's about time that we look at these case updates, you and I. Please, grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and get ready for the deep dive. This is Coffee House Crime Spring Updates of 2023. Our first update takes us to the middle of the US and back to the deserts of Utah. Welcome to Moab, folks. Found towards the eastern border of Utah lies a small city named Moab. Surrounded by massive red rock formations and national parks, it is a breathtaking place to be. With a population of 5,000 residents, not a lot goes on in the sleepy settlement. And barely a dot on the map, Moab just about contains enough to make you feel at home. This includes a local coffee roaster, a city market, and even a McDonald's. As you may well know, this is where we f and, and even a McDonald's. I mean, you, you can't live somewhere without Mickey D's biscuit and gravy first thing in the morning. How else are you supposed to evacuate your bowels? I mean, that and a big old cup of coffee. You ain't coming off that pooper for a minute. ...find Kylan Schultz and Crystal Turner. The two were a married and deeply affectionate couple, and loved to camp out in their van and meet new folks and appreciate the local countryside. Oh, yeah. Working at the one and only Moab Mc... Hippies! I love hippies! They're the best kind of people. I do, I do, I, I, I don't know why, I love hippies. I think they're awesome. Donald's, Crystal Turner was described as a caring, reliable, and energetic employee. And her wife, Kylan, was kind and had an incredible sense of humor. As you will likely remember, unfortunately, it was on Friday the 13th of August, 2021, that both women were murdered. It was earlier that very same day that they told their friends about a creepy man staying in the camping lot next to them. They didn't know who he was, but apparently he was watching them the night prior, and something seemed very off about him. Their bodies were discovered five days later on a campsite in the La Salle Mountains near Moab. Both women were undressed from the waist down, and had inflicted gunshot wounds to their backs, sides, and chests. What? At the time of making a video about this case, both their murderer and the motive were entirely unknown and authorities had no idea where to look. That would remain the case for quite a while, but several months later, a sudden breakthrough came in the form of a tip, and tragically, the news wasn't good. Unfortunately, it's here that I have to introduce you to a man- 
Okay, some of these stories I have not covered, so some of these are just blowing my mind. If you're wondering why I'm like, what? I, I don't know. We're going to get there, though. man named Adam Pinkushivix. Adam, also nicknamed Pinky, was 43 at the time of Kylan's and Crystal's murders. He... Like Pinky in the brain, Pinky? Or Pinky, like... Pinky finger? Why was his name Pinky? I hope it was for a reason that makes him angry. Two worked at McDonald's, which is how he knew of Crystal and her partner. And it turns out that he is, in fact, the one who murdered both of them. Adam was forthright in- Well, fuck. I really hope it's, his nickname is Pinky, be, 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 you know, not for good reasons. Piece of shit. In his confession to his partner, and shared critical details of the crime scene that only the murderer would have known. Following their deaths, Adam fled east of Utah to Iowa. It was here that he confessed to his partner. However, things quickly soured between the two in the weeks after. I wonder why, right? But in his confession, Adam admitted that he hated Crystal. Now, unfortunately, full justice will never be served here. It seems that his horrible actions got the better of him, because on September 24th, 2021, which was six weeks after Kylan's and Crystal's deaths, Adam successfully took his own life, taking all of his what? secrets with him. He was found lifeless in a motel room in Iowa. Surveillance cameras place his car close to- Oh, that's fucking awful. Before they found out all of his secrets. So they probably found out some was pretty sure that he knew other things and just never. Oh, that's shitty. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. To the crime scene. And analysis of his phone and internet history demonstrated extreme signs of racism, anger problems, and fantasies of sexual assault and murder. Authorities have confirmed that if Adam was still alive, they would have enough evidence individual so he was a racist he, he was a douche a dick a rapist and a murderer that's too much for one person to be y'all damn yeah he's a piece of shit to secure a conviction but sadly since he's dead the case is now closed so the main motive was hatred after all. The two had very different political views. Adam hated being bossed around by Crystal, and he openly despised both of their sexualities. I guess the real twist to this story is that Adam's former partner, the one he'd confessed to, was in fact another man, meaning that all these years, Adam was oh, in yeah. the closet. I guess what this boils down to is that Adam couldn't accept his own true self, and in response he murdered two innocent women for a lack of his own self-understanding. Sadly, none of this does anything to bring back Kylan or Crystal, two women who were madly in love with one another. They made each other's lives complete, and remained together right through to the very end. Yeah. Taking off from Moab, we're moving 8,000 miles southwest and 17 hours forward to the beautiful city of- See, even in, like, other videos, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Look, look, look at everything. Look at all of it. All of it. It's all beautiful. Cairns, Australia. Considered to be the gateway to Australia's Great Barrier Reef, Cairns is absolutely beautiful. And personally speaking, one of the places I can vouch for myself. You've got Port Douglas and an incredible coastline to the north the Great Barrier Reef to the east, and luscious rainforest to the west. The small city of Cairns is an urban hotspot centered in the very middle of paradise. And personally speaking again, any love that look at it. it's like a little a little community just like surrounded by mountains I, I love it i love it anyone living here ought to count themselves incredibly lucky located 30 miles north of cairns is the remote coastline named wangeti beach and sadly it is here that the family of a young woman named toy accordingly found her lifeless body she had travelled out to walk her dog the afternoon prior, but never returned home. She was found entirely naked the next morning, and had been violently attacked. And to make things worse, it was her own family that found her. Toya was described by everyone that knew her as a
Oh, fuck. Oh, mm. that's awful. I, I, and the family, the, mm. Loving and carefree spirit who was as vibrant as the many colors she had in her hair. She worked in a pharmacy, but her. As vibrant as the many colors she had in her hair. I like that. That was, that was cute. Real passion was in caring for animals. She adored pets of all kinds, mm -hmm. and had a real speciality in looking after and understanding them. The tragic loss of Toya's life brought a lot of pain and discomfort to the local community. And with her killer unknown, many people slept with their doors locked at night. We're going on a tangent here, but it's just a personal story of mine that's quite related to this case but a few years ago, I actually was in Australia, in Cairns and in Port Douglas. In many of these places, and particularly in Port Douglas, many people don't sleep with their doors locked at night, primarily because it's a very safe area. It's quite funny actually, but when I was there, I was renting a villa with a couple friends, and because it was very hot at night, we left all the doors open. It turns out that it wasn't people breaking in that wet to worry about, and instead, it was spiders. Because it's so remote up there, it's recommended you don't drink out the taps, but get bottled water instead, and so the fridge was stocked up with water. It was around 3am in the morning after a few drinks that I walked up to the fridge to get a glass and through the corner of my eye I could see something twitching. So I look up to see what's on the counter and no lie it is a massive spider. I'm talking like this big. Honestly this big. And what do you think it did after it? I went to bed. <laughs> okay okay okay. If, if it was me I'd get up and be like, oh fuck, that's a big ass spider, and then I would have presumably beat it to death with a water bottle. Just saying. Like, if it's that big, I I'm going to think it's packing some heat, and I'm going to have to kill it. Like, it was self-preservation moment. Was like, it ain't done nothing, but it could, and it's awfully big, and I ain't dealing with that, and I have to sleep. I'm going to kill it now. No lady, though, knowing her luck. She would have to get up and go to the bathroom, come across that screen, piss everywhere, and then wake me up and do not have to kill her. That'd be hilarious, though. I, I put the glass down. I didn't bother getting a drink of water out the fridge. Didn't bother doing anything with the spider. I went to bed. And when I woke up the next morning, my stomach dropped. It was horrible. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Australia. In fact, I want to live there one day. Fingers crossed it'll happen soon. But um, yeah, some word of advice, be very careful with their spiders. Or even better, just live down in South, you know, like the South has got no spiders down there, apart from tiny ones that won't kill you. Anyway, back to the story. There was one man that called- Tiny ones that don't, you know, feel like rejects from eight-legged freaks that's gonna carry you off into some like bamboo cave and eat you. Caught the authorities' attention and his name was Rajwinda Singh. Rajwinda Singh was a medical nurse living in the local area, and he was very well established here with a wife and three children. So, it was very suspicious when, just two days after Toya's death, he suddenly abandoned his job and even his family and fled back to India. And this is pretty much where we finished our video on Toya Cordingley's case. Rajwinda had fled back to India and quite literally disappeared. And this surveillance image captured him boarding a flight at Sydney International Airport right back to India. Although his wife claimed this was merely a coincidence, there was no reason given as to why he suddenly uprooted and left. At the time, he had no plans to stop working as a nurse, and his family even admitted that, on the evening after her death, he suddenly disappeared without any warning given. To add to this, there were several witness reports placing him near the crime scene. Cell phone and surveillance data had also backed this up, and authorities had even alluded that he may have left his DNA at the crime we counting cars scene. The big update to this case takes us to November 2022, which was just four months ago. But finally, after four years of being on the run, Indian authorities finally traced and located Rajwinder Singh. And as you can see, the man changed his appearance quite a bit. He is said to have been hiding near his hometown of Amritsar in Punjab. And since there is no formal ex- See, that's fucking stupid. If you gonna go hide, don't hide anywhere you might go. I'm not going to ever hide anywhere where I've ever lived or anywhere close to anywhere I've ever lived. If I'm hiding, I'm going somewhere completely different. Someplace I've never been, 
someplace I, I no one no one will ever know me I'm gone tradition process between Australia and India, it wasn't clear if Queensland police had the authority to request it. However, at the very moment of recording this video, just two hours ago, he was finally extradited back to Australia, all while being escorted by seven police officers. Rajwinder has since been formally arrested and charged with Toya's murder, and so begins a very long and bureaucratic process. A process that, hopefully, one day, will bring Toya's case some justice. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, my dude. Everybody deserves justice. From sunny Everyone. beaches to snowy mountains, we are now heading over to Canada to look at the case of Robert Leeming. Now, if anyone remembers this one, Robert is a very strange person. Originally from England, he migrated over to Calgary to be with his then-girlfriend. Things turned south, and eventually he fell in love with a woman named Jasmine Lovett. Things were fine for a while between the two, but sadly their relationship soured as well. And then, all of a sudden, both Jasmine and her 22-month-old daughter disappeared. What followed was a nationwide investigation, and what also became clear to authorities after a while is that Robert Leeming had something to hide. Uh -oh. But what made this case so notorious is how Robert responded in the days after Jasmine's disappearance. He's a murderer! As he got very drunk and then took interviews with local media. I can see the problems with that, but I'm gonna go ahead and say if my old lady and my kid came up missing, I'm... There's probably gonna be a liquor bottle in my future somewhere. Hey. Thing. Which, by the way, does anyone remember correct? Now, Robert was <laughs> fucking correct. Correct. Oh, that's up there with radius. Oh, God. I love people and how much they love those one certain words. Correct and radius. Very drunk during his voluntary interviews with local media, which I'm sure didn't aid his case. To add to his little stunt, he also covered the entire house with bacon in an effort to throw sniffer dogs off his trail. But after a long and complex sting operation, Robert eventually led undercover officers to both Jasmine's and Elias' bodies. And although he pled guilty to murdering Jasmine, he would maintain his innocence over her 22-month-old daughter. The update for this case is, in fact, justice, as he has now yes. been found guilty of murdering both Jasmine and Elias in the second degree. This means that Robert has now been sentenced to life behind bars, and the possibility of parole has been increased to 22 years. Moving I hope he gets it in his boom boom shoot. Mm-hmm. Hard drop. Not don't I don't not even spit. Just sandpaper all the way. Moving on, as we depart Canada and fly over to Eastern Asia, we find ourselves zoning in on the incredible country of Japan. There are, in fact, a couple of updates to share with you here. Okay, I'm gonna say I love Japan. Like that is beautiful. I love their uh, geography. Their geography, right? I love it. Beautiful. And I love the ancient, how everything just is ancient. No matter. Ooh, what is this? It, it's a tablet. Is it ancient? No. Looks. Everything. I don't know. I don't know. I'm weird. So we'll start with our most disturbing character, Issei Sagawa. For those who don't remember, Issei Sagawa, who is also known as the Kobe Cannibal, was responsible for murdering and then eating his victim René Hartevelt. It was during his studies in Paris in 1981 what? that he and René became good friends, and, well, after Aww. being invited to his home for dinner, Issei She was pretty. Issei shot her in the back of the neck with a rifle. Oh, shit! In the, why in the back of the neck with the rifle?
He then ate intimate parts of her, and... Okay. Does he mean what I think he means by intimate parts? Like, uh, the chesticle region and the... Hoo-ha? The, the, uh, angry beaver, the, 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 the scrambled eggs between the legs, the, 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 he's eating vaginas and boobs, y'all. Holy. Did other things as well. After taking a taxi to Bois de la Borgne with René's body in two suitcases, Issei found himself getting caught after getting distracted by the sun. I'm not even I have this, this one's got me like pink eyes and fucked up. Oh god. Okay, this one, I don't know what this story is, this specific one. Whoever is out there watching that, if you know which story it is or can get me the link to that, I I. I I need to react to it. I, I mean, I, I... Joking here, the plan was to put Renee's body into a lake in the park of Bois de la Borgne, and after unzipping the two suitcases, Issei then looked up at the sun to see a lovely sunset. He actually walked away from the two suitcases. This dude's big dumb. If 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 you're gonna shoot a, a pretty lady in the back of the neck, eat her to poo poo and her tetas. Okay. Wow! 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 For some reason, me bringing it back up, you know the 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 the. The cooking and the eating of the the JJ and the boobicles, the boobas, um, uh, like did did he like bake them, fry them? Y'all, whoever, please, someone, I need the link to the the actual this actual story. I need to react to it. There's so many questions. This is and during this time, people around him got curious. That is when they found the bodies, and Issei got arrested. This is where things get a little bit tricky. I mean, if you're gonna get caught over anything, it might as well be over, like, the most gorgeous sunset ever. I mean, right? If I'm gonna go to prison for the rest of my life for killing someone and eating their hoo-ha, if I'm going to get caught for any reason whatsoever, it's going to be because of the most gorgeous sunset ever. It is. But the long story short is that the French did not want to pay their hard-earned tax money on Issei's conviction. And due to a legal loophole between France and Japan, Issei was never actually tried for her murder. He was sent back to Tokyo the very next morning, where he was then institutionalized for a short while. But after that, he was let go, and remained a free man for the rest of his life. Not just that, but he pretty much became a small celebrity. I say for the rest of his life, but if you've watched Puss in Boots 2, you'll know that death waits for no one. And on November 24th, 2022, he finally passed away. Due to complications with pneumonia, Isaiah passed away at the age of 73. And without a partner or any kids, quite understandably, the only thing he leaves behind is a dark and disturbing story that was better left untold. I'm not happy with that. He still got to live a pretty long, fucking shitty, miserable shit life. I mean, it is kind of funny, pneumonia took him out. Yeah. Yeah. So, I like the fact that... Hmm. So, basically... Love that. Man, that's fucked. 
I still Keeping ourselves in Tokyo, we're now looking at the case of Tomohiro Kato, the dastardly man responsible for the Akihabara massacre of 2008. Growing up in the northern city of Aomori, Tomohiro endured a troubling upbringing full of neglect, bullying, and even abuse. This would sadly help shape him into the strange and aggressive man that he became, and moving forward, he became erratic, angry, and increasingly alone. It was in June of 2008 that his troubled frame of mind irrationally snapped. He was working as a mechanic in an area just outside of Tokyo, and after arriving at work one morning, he realized that his uniform was no longer there. Taking this as a sign of being made redundant, he stormed out of the premises and got to work on a very evil plan. And sadly, three days later, this plan was realized. On June the 8th, 2008, Tomohiro rammed a five-ton rented truck into a busy crowd in Akihabara. He then climbed out of the truck and began to attack people with a knife. And of course, the consequences behind this were catastrophic. A total of seven people were murdered, with a further ten injured, some in critical condition. Holy and after shit. hearing the news, the nation of Japan was reeling in both shock and anger, and the tragedy itself made international headlines. After failing to make a run for it, Tomohiro was arrested at the scene, and three years later would finally be tried and found guilty over his actions. With Japan still upholding the death penalty, Tomohiro was placed on death row. And you can probably see why this case has an update now. On July 26th, 2022, and accompanied by a small crowd, Tomohiro was hung at the Tokyo Detention Center. Oh, thus firmly closed shit, they do hangings? They do hangings? Oh, mad respect. Holy shit the book on this case. If I'm honest with you, I don't know where my opinion lies with the death penalty, but many of the families of Tom Hero's victims welcomed the news, and so- I would imagine. I would imagine. With that said, I hope this brings them closure. Yeah. Hmm. Getting cold. Alright, so, bringing things back to the US, we're stopping by in Delphi, Indiana. No, we're still in coffee gets cold, yeah. Delphi is a small town in Carroll County with a small population of around 3,000 residents. And before its recent rise to the public spotlight, it was classed as a safe area to live and work and is most commonly known for significance in farming. Not a lot happens in this sleepy town, but as many of you will know, that all changed in February 2017. Do we know? Liberty German and Abigail Williams were two young girls living in the area. The two were best friends, and both attended Delphi Community yeah. Middle School. On Monday, February the 13th, 2017, So there's- this is another update. Cause in the video I reacted to, I-, I it was two videos in one. It was a two-parter, I did it all in one. So is this another update since the update that we had last time? Libby and Abby were hiking on the Delphi Historic Trail near the Monon High Bridge just east of Delphi. Although it was a Monday, the two were on break from school, and today was an unusually warm day. It was around 1pm that a family member dropped them off, and just over one hour later, at 2.07pm, Libby took this infamous photo of Abigail before posting it to Snapchat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I said this, go back and watch the original video if, if you want to see it. If not, then, then no. And just... But right here, right there, I swear, that is a person. I mean, it could be a tree, but that, to me, looks like a person. I think she was onto something. She was onto something. <laughs> At 3.15pm, when the girls were due to be picked up, the two never showed up. By 5.30pm, the authorities were informed, and the following day came with some very awful news. Their bodies were found a short distance from the trail. As many of you will know, this case is very infamous for Libby's recording of her killer. And of course, this is how we all came to know Bridge Guy and this very eerie video. Yeah, I still say it sounds like a fella older, like 40s or older guys get get down the hill. It's not just saying guys down the hill, it's saying get down the hill, like get, get down, but without the t, get down the hill. 
that that's an older school way of doing it. Like, it is. For the longest time ever, and despite several persons of interest, no formal arrests were made in connection with the deaths of Libby and Abby. But on October 26th, 2022, all of that finally changed. A man named Richard Allen has since been taken into custody and formally charged with two counts of murder. And let me tell you, it does not look good for him. Richard Allen, who is currently 50 years old, lives in Whiteman Drive, which is a residential neighborhood in Delphi. The man has almost no criminal history, and actually none if you don't consider a speeding tickets. A licensed pharmacy technician in the Delphi area, he was living right under their noses. And in fact, he had even served Libby's mother during the time of their disappearance. To make things worse, this image could potentially be very, very sinister, because Richard can be seen smiling at a local bar with his wanted poster up in the background. It is not yet known when his trial will be scheduled, but he is due in court on June the 15th for a bail hearing, and the trial itself will likely be next year in 2024. I've created a more in-depth update on this case around about two months ago now, yep. so what I'll do is leave a link in the description down below if you're interested. Anyway, our next case takes us four states south to Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, so no real up new update on that one, and if he, he did go into a little bit more in depth if you would like to watch both of them together i did did them in a, i did do them in an a2 parter and it is somewhere if i can remember i will link it in the description with a city center population of 1 million residents, Jacksonville is the state's largest by population. People choose Jacksonville for its abundance of leisure and lifestyle options. The city boasts the largest urban park system in the United States, allowing people to participate in activities from boating and fishing to surfing and water skiing. And after spending all that time in the sun, it is so easy to relax in the laid back atmosphere of Jax's many eateries and craft breweries. Jacksonville was home to a girl who went by the name of Tristan Bailey. She was part of a tightly knit family who often referred to the mm. this one was very messed up i remember this one we actually have a subscriber that keeps up with this too so i am kind of up to date on some of the happenings in this themselves one. as the bailey seven tristan was extremely passionate about cheerleading and attended practicing sessions on the regular to add to this she was well liked by her peers and naturally wanted to be involved with her community it was on the morning of mother's day 2021 that the bailey family noticed something was amiss tristan was nowhere to be seen and after checking her bedroom they realized that she was unaccounted for throughout the night in the early morning hours of that night, a surveillance camera captured two individuals who were thought to be Tristan and a boy named Aiden walking eastward together. Aiden Fucci was one year older than Tristan and unfortunately had a very troubling history. He yeah. allegedly had violent fantasies and according to his girlfriend could- And he has horrid, horrid acting skills hear voices in his head, all of which were angry, told him to harm people, and told him that he was worthless. And sadly, this surveillance footage- <laughs> There was a wrong about the worthless, like, he, he's, he's worthless. He's worthless. I don't give a fuck, he's a care now, I don't give a shit. If you, you went out there, gets at the least damn bit bad over me saying that. <laughs> he's worthless. Which was the last time that Tristan would be recorded alive. At 6pm on Mother's Day, her body was discovered only moments away from this camera. Tristan was found with 114 stab wounds across her entire body, 49 of which were located over her hands and arms. Cold evidence that Tristan had desperately tried to resist her attacker. Aiden could be seen fleeing from the same camera a short while later. The following day, he would be arrested. Throughout initial court proceedings, Aiden seemed very unbothered about his situation. But after learning that investigators had a mountain of evidence against him, his tone changed quite drastically. Aiden decided to exploit his mental health in psychiatric defense, but to be honest with you, all he did was make a very embarrassing scene. Oh, 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 before he's not this, this is the best fucking thing ever. Okay? Okay? Oh. Oh, fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, now, we are about ready to witness some of the worst acting you have ever seen in your life. Not only do you need to have your copyrighted, go ahead and pop you some popcorn because you're going to need something to laugh and cry into from and just 
E and just he, Nick Gatchpop. Did was make a very embarrassing scene. I don't want to hear you tears. I don't want to hear you tears take my soul. You tears want to take my soul away. I don't want to hear you tears steal my soul. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? What's going on? What's going Going on. Why, why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Anyway, I don't think anyone bought his story. Actually, you'd have to be pretty stupid to believe it. There's some stupid people out there, though. I mean, we all know that. But yeah. Worst acting skills ever. <laughs> How to sabotage your own trial for murder. Step one, look around the room and rock in your chair. Step two, talk to apparent demons. And step three, rock a haircut like that. And no, don't remind me about my earlier videos. Anyway, the big update here is that even Aiden Fucci himself decided that his acting skills were terrible. <laughs> he's, he's made it funny. Great. And last month he pleaded guilty to first degree murder. As a juvenile, he will not face the death penalty, but instead he faces life imprisonment with a minimum Good. of 40 years behind bars. Good. His sentencing will be later this month. Good. In his hearing, Aiden expressed sorrow to both Bailey's family and his own. Fuck and you. after facing them, he said, I'm not going to drag this out any longer than necessary. Sadly, nothing can be done to bring Tristan back, and I'm sure that his sentencing will bring fresh pain to her family. But I hope that after all of this is done, they can finally find a sense of closure. So, we're finishing this video with one more case. One that remains close to my heart, and one with a small piece of happiness that you guys are responsible for. This case takes us to the beautiful lands of South Africa. In short, I am speechless when it comes to this country. There was an elephant. It was so pretty. Look at the giraffe. Oh my god. I love giraffes. I I I don't understand them, but I love them. Country. South Africa is well known for its rolling grasslands, sprawling beaches, prominent mountains, and unfortunately, its violence too. Hannah Cornelius became a victim of one of the many forms of hardship here. At the age of 21, she was a very caring and thoughtful friend. And after a night out with several friends, including Cheslin Marsh, she drove him back to his apartment to make sure he got home safe. Unfortunately, as seen in this surveillance footage, the two were ambushed while caught up in their conversation. The situation became very serious, very real, very quickly. The four men oh, forced shit. themselves into the vehicle, and both Hannah and Cheslin were now the real-time victims of a carjacking. Vernon Whitboy, Geraldo Parsons, Eben Van Neerkirk, and Nashville Julius then took them on a journey through hell. And after gutting Cheslin's bank account, they then murdered him in cold blood. Or so they thought. Cheslin was beaten to within an inch of his life, and by the time he regained consciousness and found help the next morning, Hannah had tragically been murdered by three of these men. In the wake of this tragedy, a strong case was built around the three men who killed Hannah and attempted to kill Cheslin, and in May 2018, their court proceedings finally began. Now, the evidence against them was very solid. They had testimonies, confessions, surveillance footage, forensic evidence, and most importantly, Cheslin Marsh himself, who took to the stand during court. Sadly, from the blunt force trauma caused by multiple bricks to the skull, he had been rendered deaf in one ear. And of course, to add to this would be a whole myriad of psychological and emotional pain. Bravely taking to the stand against his assailants, he stared them right in the eyes, and testified their fates into the ground. And ultimately, this would lead to all three main assailants being given life sentences, with the fourth being given 22 years behind bars. As some of you will remember, Good. I ended this video by mentioning a fundraiser to help get Cheslin back into education, 
as sadly and understandably, after the attack, he had to take some time out. Although I was hopeful that we could make a small yet positive difference to Cheslin's life, you guys really pulled through and pretty much overnight, we doubled the campaign's initial goal. Now, none of this would have happened yeah. if it wasn't for the professional journalist and filmmaker Anthony Molyneux, who set this campaign up in the first place. But both he and Cheslin were incredibly thankful for your support. And so, before I wrap this video up today, I wanted to share Cheslin's personal thank you video to you guys, the viewers of Coffeehouse Crime. Hey everyone, my name is Cheslin Moss. I would just like to take a moment to thank all the donors that donated onto the page towards my future and towards my studies. I would really also just say thank you to Lali and Anthony for creating this initiative and for all the support they've been giving me for the past five years. I really couldn't have done anything without you guys. And for that, I can never, never, never thank you guys enough. And Coffee House Crime, the YouTube channel, I would like to say thank you for covering my story, making it publicly known for the for the people of the rest of the world you can see a version of it that comes from 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 your side i really appreciate it and to all the viewers i know you guys keep me in your hearts i really appreciate all the love and support and and i was one of the most caring precious loving souls i've ever met and she always remember she always made me remember that life is short and you must love every day to the fullest and her memory loves on to the Anna Cornelius Foundation. And her spirit loves to the good work they do in the communities where they come from. I just wanted to thank everyone as well who personally donated to Cheslin's campaign. Damn. It is absolutely amazing to see that despite all this darkness, something positive can still happen. Seeing this community make a real positive impact on someone's life is probably one of the best highlights I've had so far on my journey with Coffeehouse Crime. Honestly, I really can't thank all of you enough for that. A huge thank you to Anthony Molyneux for organising Cheslin's campaign, and if you'd like to see Hannah's story in another perspective, then please check out his own film, Last Blue Ride. Alright folks, it looks like the sun's just come out, so I'm going to wrap this one up here. It might be a while until you get another case updates video like this, but I would love to hear what you think, and of course if you'd like to see this again. So, what do you think about this more casual and less serious vibe? I think I'll always use the coffee house in the background, but I'd love to hear what you think about this more laid back Adrian. You know, with how serious this type of genre is, it's quite difficult to share your own personality and also your own opinions. I'd love to do it more, but it doesn't really feel appropriate when you're talking about true crime and other people's lives. Yeah. I'd love to bring in more of my personal stories, more of my personality, and more of my opinions, and even more about coffee, because I have a genuine interest over it. I just haven't figured out how to do that yet. Anyway, this is probably a good time to say thank you so much to all of my Hey, you'll figure it out, bud. I believe in you. You do good shit. You do good shit. And honestly, whatever makes you comfortable, Holmes. You know? Yeah. Whatever makes you comfortable, buddy. Alright, that was a good story. It was actually suggested by a viewer, so, you know, I love when people suggest things. I'm very glad we watched it. Some, hey, some of those I have not reacted to, I would like to. They seemed quite interesting. Especially the one, if anyone out there knows the name of it or the link to it, leave it in the comments for me, please. I would like to react to that. All right. If y'all enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please leave a thumbs up if you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange, strange things that just blow your mind and then make you literally want to go and watch all the horrible stuff that led up to it. Think about subscribing because that's what I'm going to be doing. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Man, all, all those stories... So much fucked up in the world. It's awful to think about, but there, there really, really is just so much fucked up in the world.